Kentucky basketball exacts revenge over the LSU Tigers, but it was not the prettiest game in the world. We recap Kentucky's win over LSU on today's episode of Locked on Kentucky. You are Locked on Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be recapping Kentucky's victory over the LSU Tigers. 71-66 to was the final score, was not a very pretty game. We're going to talk about the first half, which may be one of the worst of the season. We're going to talk about the second half, how Kentucky mounted a comeback, and then we're going to look over the final stats uh, later on in the show. Take a look at my parameters, see if Kentucky checked the boxes. Let's go ahead and get, in, get into it. The first half uh, of this game. Arguably the worst half of the season. I mean, especially from an offensive standpoint, Kentucky managed to score 23 points uh, in the first half. It was just an absolutely uh, abysmal day for uh, Kentucky's offense, especially for the first 25 minutes or so of this game. Remember how I said yesterday that this wasn't going to be Alabama all over again and LSU wasn't going to come out shooting lights out from three and that LSU was going to get shut down offensively a little bit? I said that this even uh, appears to be a bad matchup. Uh, I was wrong. I was just completely flat out wrong. LSU had a couple of really lucky threes go in, and then after that point, it was just like, yeah, we're just making everything and everything's open. Surprise, you know, one of the worst three-point shooting teams uh, in the SEC. All of a sudden, oh, we're knocking down threes left and right. Congratulations. And one of the other issues that this Kentucky team had in the first half was not being able to guard uh, the man named Xavier Pinson. Now, I said on yesterday's show that Xavier Pinson uh, and uh, to quote myself, can't shoot worth a rip. Uh, and he really can't, uh, but he was, uh, he was on fire in this game. Uh, Davion Mintz was, uh, was uh, guarding him for the majority of the game. And Mintz had a really hard time staying in front of Scottie Pippen Jr., the two games that Mintz played against him. Uh, and he had a really hard time staying in front of Xavier Pinson uh, in this game. And Xavier was able to work downhill, able to get some layups. LSU started 0, f- 0 for 3 uh, at the rim. But that really didn't last long at all. Again, this was very similar to Alabama and the fact that LSU was just knocking down shots, except uh, in terms of pace of play, in terms of style, it was completely different. LSU is, is, I wouldn't say, it's a much slower team compared to Alabama and the way that they like to push the tempo, but it's still a relatively quick team uh, that LSU has. I said Kentucky had to beat the press in this game in order for the, uh, for the offense to have some su- uh, success. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, they didn't. For the majority of the game, they just simply did not. There were moments in the second half where that happened, but for the majority of this game, and especially in the first half, Kentucky struggled um, against LSU's press. They were having a hard time uh, getting the ball in. They were having a hard time working stuff into the half court. And that was something interesting. Is like after the press, Kentucky then kind of looked rushed in their half-court offense. They looked out of sync. It was very similar to everything that happened in the LSU game, uh, one of the first SEC games of the season just a few weeks ago uh, between the Wildcats and the Tigers. Very similar to the way that that game was played in that there was a lot of pressure early on, and Kentucky just kind of looked like they were out of sync and that they were rushing things. And I said uh, another thing that I was wrong on, on yesterday's show, as I said, I think this team has matured a little bit. I think they're going to make better decisions. I think we saw better decisions than we did in that first game against LSU, but there were some moments where it's just like, I think this is just what LSU's defense does to opponents. They wear you down mentally um, and, and physically as well, and we'll get to that. Whew, this team really likes fouling. L- L- LSU does. Uh, headband Shibwe. I don't know if you saw it. Oscar Shibwe uh, decided that he wanted to wear a headband. Looking fly out there, Oscar Shibwe. He was working early, uh, as was Xavier Pinson. So the two were kind of going back and forth. LSU was incredibly hot during the first 12 minutes of the game. And so while Shibwe was working the glass and getting his and ones and getting his layups to go, it was really difficult to stay in front of LSU because they were knocking down everything. Remember what I said. I'll say that I was right about this. Remember what I said about the foul discrepancy in the first game between LSU and Kentucky, that LSU 
had a ton of fouls compared to Kentucky in the first half. And I said that we may see something similar in this game again to where LSU has a large amount of fouls early and the officials even it up by doing one of two things, whether they stop calling fouls altogether or they start calling some fouls on Kentucky. And we saw the officials choose option one. After the, I believe the, um, I believe the discrepancy was eight fouls to one. I believe LSU had eight fouls to one Kentucky foul. Uh, the the officials just simply stopped calling uh, fouls on LSU. They really loosened up, and there were certain points where even the announcers like, okay, yes. Yeah, so uh, Grady just got held on that drive by Darius Davis. Like, okay, yeah, he the, he just got hounded. Um, that should probably should have been a foul. So LSU, like I called on yesterday's show, continued to play through it. They said, you know what? Regardless of whatever the officiating crew decides to do, we are going to play our brand of basketball. We're going to play physical. We're going to play handsy. We're going to foul you. We're going to push you around. We're going to make you turn the ball over, whether or not they call it or not. And so LSU continued to do what they what they did. And it really, really hurt LSU, or Kentucky's offense. It was 29-19 to in favor of LSU with less than two minutes remaining in the first half. There were two minutes left in this first half, and Kentucky had not even scored 20. LSU really put a beating uh, on on this team. Uh, One of the things that LSU does do really well, and I want to praise them for this, is they switch defensively. Uh, They they do that really, really well. They stay in front of you uh, and, and make sure that you don't get downhill on them. And they apply a lot of high ball pressure. It makes it really hard for guards to get into rhythm. That was one of the things that I noted in the first half. It's like, well, LSU switches really, really well. And I was impressed by that. was not impressed by the uh, the amount of fouls that they had been called for. The, I believe they were called for 11 fouls in the first half. It was 31 to 23 uh, at the end of the first half. And you can take a look at some of the, some of the stats here with me. So Shibwe, like I mentioned, uh, was, was working. He was 6 of 7 from the floor, had 12 points in the first half. Had a pair of blocks, too, just incredibly aggressive in the first half was Oscar Sheepway. Not like he wasn't in the second half. I mean, he had a phenomenal game. Uh, but he was really, really working in the first half. Kellen Grady had four points. Davion Mintz had two. Jacob Toppin had two. Lance Ware had one. I mean, outside of Sheepway, there was not a lot of offense going on. And I mentioned Xavier Pinson not being able to contain him. So he was five of 12 from the, uh, from the floor in the first half. And you would expect a guard like Pinson to take 12 shots in a game. Not in the first half. He was 5 of 12 from uh, the floor in the first half, 2 of 4 from 3, and then had 16 points. Darius Days had 8 points uh, for the LSU Tigers, and Tar Eason had 5 points off the bench. We're going to talk about what happened in the second half between these two teams in just a second. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Run Your Pool. March Madness is only just a couple of weeks ago, uh, away. And that means you need to start thinking about where you're going to be running your brackets this year. Are you going for the usual? Are you looking for the best? Well, we've done our homework here at Locked On Kentucky, and we are running brackets with RunYourPool.com. Along with standard brackets, Run Your Pool offers game types like Survivor or Pick X, and both are really, really fun in their own way. They have options to edit scoring, and they offer more intel to make your picks. It's all stuff that you won't find at ESPN or CBS. It's very insightful. If you've got a business, Run Your Pool can help you take some of that madness magic and play alongside your employees or even gain customers. Plus, they offer full white glove customer support, custom branding, and one of the easiest three-minute setups that you'll ever find. Clearly, we believe in Run Your Pool here because, like I said, we're running our brackets there ourselves. There's literally no truer test than that. If you want to play against me or us here at Locked On for a shot at a cash prize, you can join us at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And while you're there, you can create your pool for your friends and your family, and you can enter Pure Madness at checkout to get $10 off your custom pool. All the rules and details will be available over there at runyourpool.com slash locked on. You can uh, have a chance to win a cash prize. We look forward to seeing and beating you there. All right, continuing along here on the Thursday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Man, the week is flying by. Man, just talking about that, 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 that read there, just cannot tell you how excited I am for March Madness. One of the best times of the year. Just getting to talk about the SEC tournament, the NCAA tournament, there's just something that literally literally gives me chills. Really excited about what's coming up. And this was a game that you could probably see Kentucky having in the NCAA tournament. Kentucky really struggles against high ball pressure. 
if we see a team like Tennessee, like LSU, we went over a list of 10 teams that LSU or Kentucky would probably not match up well with uh, just a few episodes ago. If Kentucky has a bad matchup like, matchup like this, we could see a grinded out type of game like this. We'll just go over here uh, with the second half. Much like the Alabama game, uh, LSU started hot, and then they started to cool off from three, and then Kentucky mounted a comeback. This is something that I actually said in the Alabama game, is that I ex- or the Alabama episode, is that I expected Kentucky to make a comeback, just not before the end of the first half. And then they did that, and I was really impressed. I think the pacing and Alabama's lack of ball pressure allowed Kentucky to get back into that game because they were able to do more things offensively and LSU it just simply took more time because like LSU doesn't isn't going to shoot at an r- extremely high clip forever Kentucky's going to play a little defense themselves and they're going to find ways to break down this press and they did that at a couple of different times where LSU was caught napping and Kentucky just had a couple of easy drives to the basket um, but again much like the Alabama game it was comeback time in the second half it's something I wanted to note here before we we kind of detailed what happened in the run. LSU had three different players foul out in this game. They had three different players. If you thought me complaining about South Carolina's philosophy defensively or Vanderbilt's philosophy or Missouri's philosophy, if you thought that was annoying, if you thought the way that they aggressively fouled was annoying, get a load of LSU. And sure, they may have one of the best defensive efficiencies in the entire country, but they do things that they shouldn't be getting away with. This was not a fun game to watch in terms of pacing, especially in the second half. It was just a weird game. It was just a weird game, in my opinion. I know a lot of fans out there are probably like, yeah, this was really, really stressful. stressful." It was at different points in this game, but I knew Kentucky was going to eventually come back. It almost put me to sleep. It was just like, okay, we can't even sit here and watch basketball. It's just like stretches without anything happening except free throws. Wasn't fun. Free throws and turnovers. Kentucky didn't make stupid decisions in the half court, like stupid decisions in the the half court like they did last time these two teams faced off, but they were just hounded, like I said a second ago, like just very physical play from LSU. I will say, though, very similar to the first game, Keon Brooks had a a couple of jumpers that were just so rushed and unnecessary. Um, Again, shot selection needs to be better, Uh, and it, it was really important in a game like this. Brooks did not have a great game, in my opinion. Kentucky really needed a run in the second half. Duh, they were down. And out of all the players to give the Wildcats a spark, out of all the different guys, down your starting backcourt, who do you turn to? How about Bryce Hopkins off the bench? So Bryce came in, and he got a layup, and he cut it to six. And then he got a layup and cut it to four. And then Mintz got a layup and cut it to two. And then Hopkins got a layup, or missed a layup, I believe. No, he made a layup. And then got fouled. He missed the free throw. Then Hopkins went in again and got a layup to go with a foul. And then Kentucky led by three. So it was just, it was Hopkins, Hopkins, uh, Mintz, Hopkins, Hopkins, 11 nothing run. All of a sudden, Bob's your uncle. The man was just absolutely unconscious. Uh, he, he was just absolutely phenomenal, just playing so physical and aggressive at the rim. Like, he had just stolen Shibwe's soul for a second. and was just like, I'm just going to take over this game like you would. Just real quick, bud. Appreciate it. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal minutes from Bryce Hopkins. Cannot say any more about how great he played in this game. You literally can't ask for more than him, uh, than, the, more, more than what he gave. Uh, he exceeded all expectations in this matchup. So, Kentucky had a really hard time beating LSU's press like I mentioned, and then scoring while the ball was live because once Kentucky broke down the Kentucky, or the LSU press, they would get to the lane and they'd be like, all right, we're going to drive into the paint. We're going we're gonna to get a layup. And then LSU would be like, nope, we're going to slap you in, foul you, put you on the free throw line. Have fun there. And to LSU's benefit, I'll say that, you know, if they play against teams that don't shoot well, shoot well at the free throw line, that's a legitimate strategy. I hate it. But it's a legitimate strategy. Uh, strategy. I understand why you would do it. And Kentucky didn't shoot well from the free throw line in this game, actually. Ended up shooting 71%, 23 of 32. If you go 28 of 32 from the line, I mean, this game's probably not close because LSU's going to have to adjust and do different things other than play full court press the entire stinking game. Which they did. I'm just being, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but 
it was just L- LSU just fouled so much. They finished w- finished with twenty five fouls in this game. Twenty five. That's a lot. It's not fun. It was, again, it was just and I, I put it in, in my notes here, just randomly. This is such an oddly paced game. Like I hate it. I didn't like it. Kentucky eventually did though. They they eventually did pull away. They led by 12 with five minutes left. And again, part of it had to do with just LSU occasionally falling asleep on defense. I mean, if you think about it, if you give your all for 45 minutes and you are just physically exhausted on both ends, aren't you going to start to fall asleep a little bit trying to pressure uh, to apply high ball pressure and full court press all the time? Aren't you going to break down a little bit? Or the opponent's eventually going to figure out how to break it down because you are a little tired? I mean, it's to be expected, in my opinion, unless you're an NBA team. LSU started to lose their intensity for just a little bit. And I'll also say this, during that stretch, you know, Jacob Toppin, I mean, the man always knows the bank is open. Anytime he chucks up a three, but how about that? Just like every single time, bank, bank, against uh, against Alabama. Oh, I'm just going to fog this one up late in the shot clock. Oh, it's a bank shot. Bank's always open with Jacob Toppin. Kentucky led by 15 with three minutes left, and then LSU kind of woke up. And like the, like they had a mat, nap for a few minutes. They're like, "Oh shoot, I got a game to play," and then they started applying pressure. And for like the last m- minute and like thirty seconds of the game, there was a stretch where it went like this. It was like Kentucky turnover three, Kentucky turnover two free throws, Kentucky turnover, and then LSU barely missed a layup. Xavier Pinson barely missed a layup, and it almost cut the game to two. It's like turnover bucket, turnover bucket, turnover, almost a bucket to cut it to two. And, and Kentucky got really lucky. There were there were some fans that were leaving, and even the SEC network announcers were just like, "Everybody, get back in your seat because this one ain't over." Uh, and it wasn't. It was a. Uh, it was just again a really weirdly paced game. It looked like Kentucky was going to win, and they were going to cover like easily. I believe the line it, it opened at eight, and then it dropped to seven for some reason right before the game started. And then uh, Kentucky eventually won the game by uh, by five, seventy one to sixty six. Again, just so, so weird the way that this game played out. We're going to talk about stats, and we're going to go over my parameters here in just a little bit. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Bet Online. Football might be over for this season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired head coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. Bet Online remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds, right to the Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, wrapping up the Thursday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl here with you. Really appreciate you making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everybody that we are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, it would mean the world if you subscribed. We got over 500 subscribers just a day or so ago. I'm, I cannot tell you how excited I am about that 500 subs. That's really, really awesome. You guys are awesome. If you're listening on podcast format, would love for you to leave a review for the show. Give me your thoughts. Also, I, I believe there. I believe I've not gotten the opportunity to shout anybody out in terms of like guessing the final score. So the final score was seventy-one to sixty-six. Somebody guessed seventy-five, sixty-five, uh, close but no cigar. I believe it was Phil Goodman. I may be wrong. I'd have to go pull it up. If I if if that's completely wrong, I apologize. I'm a moron. Um, but but congratulations for for being the closest. I think anybody's gotten. <laughs> Uh, so far, including myself, by the way, like since non-conference play, I have been off on a lot of different scores, uh, just completely off. Anyway, some final stats here from the game, just to go over some of the best players. So Oscar Shibway, uh, the, the stats aren't like insane as opposed to the things that Shibway's done that are insane. But like, man, he played so good in this game, in my opinion, had 17 points, 16 rebounds, was five of seven from the floor, shot 11 free throws. Just tells you how how what what kind of a day it was uh, at the office. Seven of eleven from the free throw line, uh, had three blocks as well. Just a phenomenal day from Oscar Shibway. Jacob Toppin finished with eight points, was two of seven from the floor, 
Keon Brooks did not have a good day. Six points, one rebound, three turnovers. Kellen Grady did not make a three, was 0 of 5, uh, but made all three of his free throws, was 5 of 13 from the floor, finished with 13 points, three rebounds, three assists. Davion Mintz, 4 of 10 from the floor, 13 points, two rebounds. And then Bryce Hopkins off the bench had 16 minutes, 13 points, four rebounds, five of six from the floor, was three of six from the free throw line, which is not great, but still, like, just to get him to come off the bench and have that kind of production was just absolutely fantastic. It's his his career high in, in points. Really awesome stuff from Hopkins. And then you look at LSU, Xavier Pinson finished with 26. Tari Eason was just non-existent in this game. Had five personal fouls. He fouled out, only had 13 minutes in this game. Five points, one rebound for LSU's leading score and the fifth best score in the SEC. Your boy had five points. Good job, LSU. Darius Days had 10 points, eight rebounds, was four of 15 from the floor, and then Xavier Pinson was six of 20. Asking their star players that start to do a lot, could not get it done. Let's go over some of my parameters here because these are going to tie into some of the some of the main stats. Did Kentucky. So we ask four different did Kentuckys at the end of the show or whenever we, we uh, recap stuff. Did Kentucky shoot the ball well? Did they have decent shot selection? Did they play well in transition, both offensively and defensively? And did they protect the rim? Let's go over it. So did Kentucky shoot well? Well, they were shot 46.9% from the floor, which is not bad. It's decent. But the problem was where they uh, their, their percentage from the three-point line. So I said on yesterday's show, <laughs> I said on yesterday's show that Kentucky needed to, uh, I think it was thought it was going to be important for Kentucky to make some threes in transition. And I said, not a lot, just a couple. And, and, uh, and Kentucky said, we got you, boss. And they made two, they made two of 12 from three. They made a couple. That's all I was asking for. That's what I got. Uh, so 16.7% from three is not going to cut it, but I mean, hey, it, it, I would say kind of to that to that parameter. Did Kentucky shoot the ball well? Eh, kind of. All right. Did Kentucky have decent shot, shot selection? The answer to this question, in my opinion, is no, and it's not necessarily their fault. Part of it was, but part of it was that LSU just really made Kentucky uncomfortable all day on offense. So it wasn't necessarily uh, Kentucky's fault. It's just the way the game was played. Did Kentucky play well in transition, both offensively and defensively? This is one of the rare times you'll, you'll see in the, on the stat sheet where Kentucky actually had less fast break points than their opponent. Kentucky had five, LSU had eight. And the reason that can, uh, LSU had some fast break points is, again, full court press, turning Kentucky over, LSU getting out and running, getting some layups and dunks. Had a couple. And then final thing here, did Kentucky protect the rim, and this is one of the rare games where you'll, you'll see Kentucky finish with more blocks uh, than their opponent. LSU didn't have a single block in this game. Good job, LSU. Uh, and then Kentucky had five, and I believe Shebway had three of those. And just a, a solid day protecting the rim, in my opinion. LSU shot 36.8% from the floor. So I would say, yes, muy bueno. Uh, Kentucky definitely protected the rim. They also only had 12 turnovers in, the, turnovers in this game. Of course, LSU had 23 points off those turnovers, so yikes. But still, oof. Also, something else I wanted to note, and it's like, this is it, we're just talking about this is one of the rare games where you'll see this happen. Well, this is one of the rare games where you'll see Kentucky take so many more free throws than their opponent, I almost feel bad, but at the same time, that's the way LSU played the game. LSU shot 18 free throws, made 15 of them, 83%. And uh, then, like I mentioned earlier, Kentucky shot 32 and I think that it's I think that it's funny, and I, this is this is the what I'll what I'll wrap up with. I think that it's funny that I was complaining in the recap episode of the first LSU game that I was complaining yesterday is like LSU made some just a random threes at the end of that game to give themselves a win, uh, just like out of left field contested, and then they made some contested threes to open this game, and then they couldn't clutch up down the stretch. Um, it was just a just a weird weird game in my opinion. All right, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Daw underscore, and you can follow the show on Instagram at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the YouTube comments. If you're listening on podcast, hit me on the socials. Love to talk to you guys. I will see you all tomorrow. 
Have a good day, everybody, and God bless.